Okay, I am calling the meeting of governance, organization, and legislation to order. It is 10.35, and we are being recorded by Amherst Media. And a somewhat melancholic gathering, at least for the chair, since some of my members will no longer be with me after this meeting. And so thank you to them very much. And uh, let's take a look, quick look at the agenda. Um, we have item number 2% for art. We have something we just received from the uh, town manager, which is actually from our legal counsel. Um, no, item number three has been removed from the agenda at the request of the sponsor um, because they cannot be here today. Um, any other questions of other items on the agenda? I tend to go through it pretty much in the order it's here, unless someone has any uh, concerns or questions. Um, some of these items we may decide to postpone, but um, hopefully you've had a chance to at least look at it ahead of time. I hadn't heard anything from anyone, so this is the order I plan to do it in. And the first item then for us this morning would be review of percent for art bylaw. And we all have received uh, this morning a document from the attorney, um, which has both a brief attorney uh, opinion and a series of edits to the document. And so we as a committee need to make our decision right away. Do you wish to spend the next whatever, 20, whatever minutes it's going to take to read this through quietly and then discuss it? Um, or do you wish to postpone this to another meeting? question or do you want the chair to make the decision yes I, I've read through uh, KP laws um, revisions and they seem reasonable and clear and so I don't no see any problem with doing it right now yeah I really don't and then uh, we would hope and then it would come to on the agenda of the 20 March okay. 23rd so you would like council to proceed. meeting yes okay. I would anyone else have any thoughts on this I think personally, I prefer having these things in advance so we can actually read them and think about them. Um, but uh, this has been on, uh, been on hold for a while. So um, I'm willing to go ahead if the rest of you are willing to go ahead. But so I don't see any objections. Okay. So I'll give people a few minutes, including the chair, to look at this in quiet. Um, and then we can open our discussion. Now break for commercial, perhaps we'll do this.
what people are doing. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, what I think I'd like to do uh, is look first at the, um, if there are any comments about the edits or changes, any concerns, and then I'd like to look briefly at the note from the attorney. So um, I had one place where I had just a question, um, but let me hear from anyone else. Are there any places where you feel, I guess what I'm asking is where you feel that somehow the intent of the uh, original sponsors or the sponsors has been changed in some way that um, anyone seeing that? <coughs> Mandy? So the only question I would have is the changing of, I guess, number on, on that question is under Public Art Commission's responsibilities there was a lot of changing from soliciting proposals and establishing the budgets to advising the town manager for doing so. Um, mm -hmm. You know, instead of overseeing the partnership, working with the manager to monitor. I personally don't think it changes the intent of the bylaw mm -hmm. <clears throat> in terms of what the bylaw would accomplish. It does, though, change some of the responsibilities of the percent of the Public Art Commission. Anyone else? Evan? Yeah, I mean, so there were three places where I saw a sort of substantive as opposed to clarifying changes, and that was one of them is this revision Add, adds the town manager uh, into, I counted six places where it did not previously exist. Mm -hmm. um, and so it definitely seems to empower the town manager and shift a lot of power away from the Public Art Commission. And so your question was of intent, and I don't think that it necessarily diminishes the intent mm -hmm. of the bylaw as a whole, but I do wonder if it diminishes the intent of the Public Art Commission as to what they saw as their role in the process. And I would be curious to see their reaction to this mm -hmm. because of some s decent power was taken away from them and transferred to the executive. Mm -hmm. Pat, any thoughts? I think you had originally said you felt that it was you did not have any particular concerns. Is, is that your? But I, I'm a little, yeah, Pat? No, no, go ahead. I'm trying to sort out our own role here. Um, we normally get, we are supposed to get this as we just have um, once it's been, um, you know, looked at by the attorney and also obviously after we've had a, ideally a conversation with the sponsor, though that hasn't happened a lot, that's what ideally should happen. So um, we now have the attorney opinion and they've made some changes um, from a, we assume, a legal perspective in terms of how responsibilities and the law and so forth. We assume this is being done from a strictly legal perspective. And it does shift some of the original responsibilities away from the Public Art Commission to the town manager. And the assumption is that's done for legal purposes, no? Or um, and or is it simply yeah, Evan? So looking at this, I'm having flashbacks from bylaw review committee, right? 
um, because one of the challenges I think we faced in bylaw review is uh, occasionally we would send things uh, to the attorney for opinion mm -hmm. and we'd get back similar to what we just got here, which were edits, which <coughs> were always beyond what we actually asked, which is great. We'd say, hey, can you give us an opinion? And they'd say, oh, we actually just edit a bunch of the wording. Mm -hmm. The problem is those edits were very rarely accompanied by explanation as to why those edits were made. Mm -hmm. And so we'd end up going back to town attorney and saying, well, why did you do this? And so the other, if, if I could, the other two places where I saw sort of substantive changes that I'm curious about, one under funding, the yeah. inclusion of the shall be voted as a separate line item of the project, which was not previously in there, mm -hmm. um, which is probably marginal, but I would also imagine once you separate out and have to vote on a, an item separately, it, it makes it easier to vote that item down when it's not built into a bigger project. So right. I have a feeling um, that's something that the proponents of this measure probably w wouldn't be too thrilled with. But And then the other thing was under four, four had I think the most substantive revisions too, which required uh, a whole lot that I'm not even quite sure I understand. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But it seemed to be, I mean, it, it, my initial brief read that the um, artist might has to carry some type of insurance, is that, yeah. which which is was nowhere in this before, or I don't think. And so, um, and, and so my, my, the point mm. I'm getting around to is, I don't know if those, the reason that those two things were added in were to because it's not actionable without them, um, or because it just clarifies things, but absent that rationale, we just have to do this thing that you just did, George, which is the attorney did this and they must have done it for a legal reason and therefore it must be right. Or they did it in order to protect the town. In other words, there might also be right. a reasoning, in other words, it's not necessarily a legal issue, but they might see a place where this exposes the town to risk and so they insert language to minimize or eliminate that risk or to shift that risk to some other party. And <clears throat> that puts us in an interesting position because we don't represent the Public Art Commission. Um, we work uh, for and with the council. And so I guess I'm wondering just in general how far we want to get into the weeds between the attorney who we pay to represent our interests and to look out for the, uh, the well-being of the town um, versus what a particular um, sponsor is, is seeking. Um, I'm a little puzzled as, or confused as to what our role should be. I guess I would, my initial thought would be we would defer to the attorney um, in these matters, though I agree we have no explanation here, um, but we would defer to the attorney with the assumption that what they're doing is due diligence and protecting the town from risk and minimizing its exposure. Um, and also obviously making sure nothing is illegal or violates any mass general law or any other uh, sort of thing. And the changes they make would be in that spirit. Um, there clearly are some edits that are simply meant for clarification purposes. Um, so how much do we want to get into this? Um, we could question a whole bunch of this. It goes back to the attorney. The attorney will take a week, two weeks, who knows, whatever, to get back to us. And we also have the Public Art Commission, right? Um, I guess I'm asking all of you, to what degree should we, can we uh, get into this, these sorts of levels of detail, other than simply noting what has changed as far as we can see? Pat. In the uh, email to Paul. Yeah. The changes about adding town manager or emphasizing town manager mm -hmm. is very clearly sure. stated that it, it um, is under the authority of the charter and it, that uh, responsibility can be delegated. So I don't think we have any issue with those. Mm -hmm. I think it's sometimes hard. I, I don't want this to fall into the sinkhole of KP laws time frames um, because people have been working on it for so long. Um, so I, I kind of agree that I trust the other edits that uh, to be, uh, but uh, sometimes I would love to be able to explain if a committee that uh, says, well, that's not, I would like to be able to explain the reasoning. Okay. Right. Mandy. <coughs> so 
I, I was going to mention the same thing Pat just did about the email, talking about the Section 5 changes, the ones on responsibilities. And I think what we could do is say, you know, that was change was there. If we wanted to vote, we could vote um, recognizing our vote or in the report could recognize that those changes have not been through and we do not know what the Public Art Commission believes about those changes, but that it's our opinion that we're going to, as a committee, that we're going to accept the attorney's recommendations on that um, and that the Public Art Commission, that, and maybe we send it to the Public Art Commission and say, hey, just so you know, if you want to give the, if you want to put your opinion out on what your thoughts on <coughs> these changes are, send it to the council for consideration at the first reading. Mm -hmm. um, section four changes, the ones to public art ownership, um, I actually had no problem with that, and I guess that's probably my experience with insurance and, and legal stuff and all. It, I really do think it's just a protection of the town. It, I read it as while the installation and creation is going into effect that yeah. the um, artist must have insurance so that if something happens during the installation or as they're creating mm -hmm. the art, they can't sue the town. They've got insurance. If the town gets sued, it's on them. Um, mm -hmm. For example, when I rented a house from Amherst College as part of housing, we had to put on our homeowner's insurance, our renter's insurance, a rider that said they were an additional assured. This is just a typical normal thing mm -hmm. and it just protects other people. Right. Um, so I don't have a problem with that and I don't think it changes at all the scope of what's being done. I think it really is for the interest and we should accept our attorneys okay. thinking on trying to protect our town. That's what they're told to do. The line item one that Evan mentioned is interesting because I do agree it changes it and it changes potential things. I also though read it as a potential um, corollary to the item that, you know, the last sentence of funding that we could by majority vote lower or eliminate the percentage for any qualifying project, um, that, you know, we have the ability as a town council to remove a project from, you know, to sort of waive this bylaw. And so I saw that change to add the separate line item vote as sort of a corollary to, well, if we have a way to waive it by voting that line item down, you're, that's sort of the one of the ways to waive the bylaw um, <clears throat> in a very obvious mm -hmm. manner because yeah. you voted that line item down. I do, though, agree with Evan that pulling it out as a line item does then add more potential for it more frequently being voted down. Evan? Yeah, so, and just to clarify some of the statements earlier, I'm actually, I'm not, I actually think that the edits I pointed out are good ideas. Like, I actually support pulling it out, um, and I think the insurance is a good idea, but I do think it's important to recognize where there are substantive versus, versus just clarifying um, edits and where there are areas where um, we might want to, how do I put this, where the sponsors of this legislation um, it may throw up some red flags or concern on their end, and that's not for us to worry about necessarily, right. but I think it's important for us to note as we move this forward, since we're the last step before it goes to the council, mm -hmm. um, that there are substantive changes that are gonna come out of what we recommend from this committee that the sponsors perhaps have not yet seen, even though I hope Paul is sending this to them. Um, again, this re sh reveals to me <clears throat> the problem that we're gonna face repeatedly and is that we're given something, and I'm not blaming anybody here, I'm not blaming Paul, I'm not la blaming the attorneys. They do what they do when they do it. Paul gets it to us as soon as he can, um, but um, we're now trying to, to sort through this um, in, at the head of, an, a, of, a, of a full agenda. Um, I think in a normal situation, uh, I would prefer that we simply say, okay, we're gonna digest this, and at the next meeting, we will talk about it. Um, we've embarked on this, we're gonna pursue it to the end, I think, but this is something that bothers me, um, but from the other side, we get pressure from counselors and from sponsors saying, come on, come on, come on, get this done, get this done. Um, but in order for us to do our job, uh, other than just to be a rubber stamp, um, we really do need to have some time to look at a document um, and examine it and think about it um, before we come in here and actually talk to the public. Um, here we're basically doing it on the fly. Um, 
it also seems to me, and I'm just speaking for myself, obviously, that, that when we get legal review, the uh, default position, it seems for me, would be that the attorneys are paid by the town to look out for the interests of the town. And so uh, we assume that the kinds of changes they're making are made with the town's interest in mind. And we would not normally question that. On the other hand, if we do have questions, what do we do? I guess we then have to say we have to hold on this and we have to go back to the attorney for clarification. And that's certainly within our rights, and I'm not saying we should never do it, and maybe we'll do it in this case, but again, it adds more time to the process. Um, and so, uh, two concerns. Um, the fact that we get this at the last minute, and now we're trying to scramble to, to do a decent job. And secondly, um, if we do have concerns or problems, um, it seems legitimate for us to go back to the attorney, but that's going to make this take longer. And maybe the answer to that is it takes as long as it takes. Um, we have um, a member. From the I'm sorry, a member from the public. I think the member is the chief yeah. Yeah. Soon to be. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was a member of the ad hoc committee and that developed the bylaw. And um, the ad hoc committee did not dissolve. It um, adjourned its last meeting without moving to dissolve because it recognized that there was a possibility that uh, amendments might be proposed from any source, mm -hmm. and the ad hoc committee decided to stay in existence. And I just wanted to share that. Okay. So, it goes back to the ad hoc committee. Then the ad hoc committee maybe says, we want to change X, Y, and Z. Then it comes back to us. Then it goes back to the attorney. <laughs> I'm beginning to get a feeling like this is this, right? But maybe that's just the way this, this is going to work. Um, Pat. Isn't there a way of um, recommending this to the council with the proviso that the uh, uh, Procemper Art Ad Con Committee might have changes or something? something more I was gonna say something similar actually um, we are the last review before it goes to council right. that doesn't mean though that other committees can weigh in on the language we forward <coughs> so I would say if this is the language we want to forward we can vote on this language and say this is the language we deem clear consistent and actionable and wise to adopt or whatever because of all the things that George has been mentioning about taking attorney thing, but you can also then contact the Percent for Art ad hoc committee. You can contact Public Arts Commission and say, this is the language we're forwarding. We know it's different from what Percent for Art mm -hmm. proposed. When it comes to the council, maybe Percent for Art wants to meet and discuss and have a recommendation on this for the councils to say whether they agree with those changes or would like additional changes and then it's at the council for a first reading to discuss those potential changes that potentially avoids this back and forth through right. different things but does enable the council to have the opinion of say the public arts commission on their changed right. duties. Actually, I don't agree. Um, I think it should go to us. We do our job, and then it should go to the other parties. And as Manny said, at that point, it's going to be between them and the council, if I understand Manny. In other words, mm -hmm. and at that point, any changes that will take place, including if, if the council decides it wants further legal review, but it's a council decision at that point. Once we have, if we do, if we say this is, this is we, we're, we're going to declare this clear, consistent, actionable, with the note that, that Mandy's mentioned. And then at that point, anyone else can weigh in, but it was the council level. That makes sense to me. Okay. Um, now, if we do have problems with this, and that's a certain possibility, in other words, if we're looking at this, and again, that's why I wish we had more time, but if we're looking at this and serious issues arise as to whether we feel this is changing the actual content in some way, um, or for whatever reason, 
or we just want more clarity for whatever reason, we are cer it's certainly within our right to simply say, we're not going to vote on this. We're going to send it back to the attorney through Paul and ask for clarification or whatever. And so any, any one of you should feel free if you feel strongly that there is an issue here um, that we would have to say we can't vote um, at this point because we have some, we need clarification. But if we do feel it's clear, consistent, actionable, as it's stated with these edits, and I think Mandy's given us a path forward, um, we can have a vote, assuming the vote is, is affirmative, it goes then to the council. And at that point, it's between the council and whoever wants to weigh in. Does that make sense? Evan, sorry. Uh, so I had read this by law before. I didn't see anything that threw up my red flags in my mm -hmm. um, ill-informed initial reading of it. Uh, <laughs> we have attorney stuff. I think it's ready to be sent to the council. My concern remains, and this is not just about this, but this is about our relationship with town attorney because this was a consistent problem in bylaw review, which is when recommending substantive changes, we need an explanation because my concern is if public art commission or percent for our ad hoc committee or any individual who supports this comes to the council when it's before the council and says, I don't like this change that was made and I want someone to offer an amendment to change it and a counselor doesn't necessarily know why something was changed they may offer an amendment that changes the in during the meeting that changes the bylaw not just this bylaw but any bylaw in in a way that's problematic and so um i think everyone explained why we think these changes were made and they make sense but we're trying to think about what lauren's intent was and uh you're we're probably right because mm -hmm. it's logical but maybe not and so it would just be nice to be able, if, if someone comes and says, I don't like this change and I want to make an amendment, it'd be nice to say, no, 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 we have from the attorney, this amendment was made because it protects the town from liability or, or X, Y, Z. And so I think this is partly about this, but I also think as I depart this committee, one of the things I would say, given my experience on bylaw review is we need to maybe have a conversation with the town manager about how we ask for town attorney opinion and say, if you're giving us edits and those edits go beyond just clarification or wordsmithing, we need explanations mm -hmm. um, because we shouldn't have to guess why they did something. And I will say there actually was one instance in bylaw review where the attorney did something like this and we weren't sure why. And when we asked and the attorney's reason came back, we realized it was because there was some information that she was missing and actually what she was recommending was wrong. Mm -hmm. um, it had to do with the, the revolving fund. Mm -hmm. And so had we actually taken her advice, it would have actually created a big problem. But mm -hmm. it's just, and so I, I'm worried about just saying, well, this is the expert opinion right. without no. knowing the explanation. Right. Right. So I think going forward, I, going forward, we need to ask for explanations when edits are given. We can't just take them um, at that. But all of that said, mm -hmm. I move to declare the percent for art by law clear, consistent, and actionable. As presented by the attorney? As presented by the attorney. <laughs> so we have a motion um, and we have a second. Um, and she would like to repeat that yes. motion, Evan. I move to declare the percent for art bylaw clear, consistent, and actionable as presented by the attorney, town attorney. Pat seconded. Uh, Evan has made the motion. <coughs> Further discussion? Um, I think I'm going to try and sum up <laughs> in my own mind the discussion, but any further discussion, comments, thoughts? We're going to, I'm not sure how I'm going to vote yet, um, partly because I do feel strongly that um, this is not the way we should do things. Um, and maybe I'll cast a negative vote just so that I can have a chance to make that point. I'm still thinking out loud here, but um, I feel strongly that when we're getting this kind of detailed attorney opinion, which we value a great deal. I mean, this is, this is what we want and this is what they are supposed to do. But when it comes to us on the morning of our meeting, it makes it very difficult for us to do our jobs. And I have 
three very bright colleagues, but um, they, it's just, it's difficult and makes me uncomfortable. Um, having said that, my presumption is that when this is done by the town attorney, um, we as a committee would tend to defer to the town attorney in terms of their uh, job of protecting the town and looking out for the town's best interest. It is not our job, I don't think, to be a, a advocate for the sponsor. Our job is to uh, declare clear, consistent, actionable, and to trust in general that the town attorney in doing their due diligence is doing it from the perspective of protecting the town's interest. Um, nonetheless, we've also agreed that if there are places where in reading, um, assuming you have the time to read it with care, reading the document and the edit with care, we have places where we are um, not satisfied or we have serious questions. It is perfectly within our right and we should uh, put everything on hold and go back to the attorney for um, explanation, clarification, whatever. What I'm hearing from my colleagues this morning is that based on their reading of this this morning, which is not an ideal situation, they're uh, willing to accept this edits, these edits as clear, consistent, actionable, and they do not have any serious reservations they wish to send back to the attorney for more clarification. So we are obviously ready to proceed. Um, what I'm hearing from my colleagues also is that I should have a conversation with the town manager sooner rather than later about this whole process and um, Evan's request that changes to the degree possible come with some explanation. Obviously, there are wordsmithing and editing changes. There's no reason to explain those, and that probably is the bulk of what is in here. But there are clearly some places where um, the changes are probably due to protecting the town's interests, providing the town with some flexibility, um, and to, again, to protect its financial interests. Um, and so it shouldn't require a great deal of comment by the attorney, but some kind of comment would be helpful, and that's something that I'm hearing from Evan, and I assume from my colleagues as well that I should proceed with Paul. All right. <laughs> Any other thoughts, uh, Mandy? I just want to ask that if we vote on this, to f which if it's a positive vote, it would get forwarded to the council, that the chair um, contact the percent for our ad hoc committee and maybe even the Public Arts Commission, um, although I know the chair of the Public Arts Commission is on that ad hoc committee, for them, the town attorney's language, and specifically say, if you want, you know, uh, you know, sort of specifically mention that they would be welcome to present or add a report or memo to a mm -hmm. council agenda. We don't know. We can assume this would end up on next meeting's agenda, obviously, until agenda mm -hmm. setting and it's set. We don't know, um, but I think that's the president's desire, if possible, is as soon as we're out to do it, but so that that comes from this committee as that respect of recognizing, we know this is not what you presented, and mm -hmm. so we're gonna mm -hmm. give you that opportunity to talk to the council about that. So you're asking me to reach out to the Public Art Commission and the chair of the ad hoc committee mm -hmm. to notify them of these changes. And it seems that I should also send them a copy of what we have approved, correct? Um, not rely or ask the town manager to do it, but I could send them a copy. What about the lawyer's opinion? Should I forward them? I mean, Paul has said I can forward it to anyone I wish. Yeah, prefer the whole email. Yeah, the whole forward the email. Okay, okay. So, and forward them the email. And invite them, if they wish, to attend or to comment to uh, the uh, president or to the council. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Any other thoughts, comments? Because we have a motion in front of us that's been seconded. So I'm going to call the question. All those in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. aye. We have three in favor. All those opposed, please raise your hand and say nay. Nay. <laughs> there are no abstentions, so the vote is three to one with one absent. And I will explain, that's right, I will explain my vote in council and uh, it, 
that's, yeah, okay. The next item on the agenda, if we're ready to move on, is item four. Uh, this is, uh, I'm gonna turn to Mandy for this, but we have the interim affordable housing policy resolution. It should be in your packet. And um, Mandy, I'm gonna turn to you to take the lead on this. So before I take the lead, I just wanna mention that I will be leaving this meeting in about 15 minutes to go to a meeting as Ooh. vice president on the... This is news. So, yeah, I've been asked to attend oh, on the COVID on the COVID Did thing. You just get an um, email? I got an email asking me to attend Why a meeting at 11.30. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I just wanted to let you know, I, I will be leaving at 11.30 to go system? up one floor to attend as vice president a oh. meeting on the COVID issue. In 15 um, minutes. In 15 minutes. No, I think he has the power to forbid her to leave, actually. <laughs> So, I know, exactly. but, but I thought I'd right. let Thank that you. out Thank there because um, that leaves you with a minimum of three. <laughs> um, so no yes, one else may read email. this this resolution was was adopted by the Please. town seat. Well, was recommended by the community resources committee by a vote of I think it was four to one, um, not three to one. I think we had five members there at the time. Um, I believe that was the vote, right? Yeah. Um, oh, I should just look it up. Um, and since it is now being sponsored by the CRC, it is in front of GOL. I forwarded it to GOL for that reason. The, the vote was... Um, where's my vote? Four to one um, to, to recommend this. Um, and so it's in front of us. It is intended to be an interim affordable housing policy as the title is um, for the purposes of while CRC works on drafting and crafting a housing policy per the referral to at least set forth something from the council supporting the affordable housing portion of what the town has been doing. Okay. All right. Um, thoughts from my colleagues about this in terms of clarity consistency and actionability. I mean, this was written by the master of clarity, consistency, and action. Two of us so. are on the other committee, so. <laughs> so I think uh, I have no uh, concern. I'm prepared to accept the motion. Um, I move to declare the, get the title right. The resolution adopting an interim affordable housing policy as sponsored by CRC, clear, consistent, and actionable. Is there a second? Second. All right, a grudging second from uh, Evan. So we have a, a motion in front of us. It's been seconded. Um, any further discussion for the public? I'm gonna call the question. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand and saying aye. 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 No, so it's four zero with one absent. Very good. Rule of procedures 8.2, 8.6. Do we need both? Um, this was raised at the uh, last meeting, and um, uh, the pollinator has been stricken from the agenda. The sponsor has asked that that be done. The sponsor is not able to be present today, um, or sponsored. Yeah, okay. So ROP 8.2, 8.6. I look at this. I don't know if anyone else had a chance to. I know Mandy's looked at it. Um, and 
Uh, they seem to be identical. The only thing I could find different was that um, at one point, uh, review by town attorney is mentioned um, for under bylaws, and that I don't think was mentioned in 8.2. Maybe I missed it. But otherwise, I could not see why these are both here. Um, but is there a reason? Yes, Evan. So I haven't looked at this closely, but my memory of these two rules is that one of them is for automatic referral right. so that we don't have to vote in the council to refer things like bylaws to GOL. That's correct. And then the other thing restricts the council's ability to act on something before it's been considered by a particular body. And so they, they aren't duplicative. They serve very different purposes. One okay. says that we don't have to vote before we send it to a body. And the other says the council can't vote until it's been considered by that body. They could perhaps be combined into one rule but I don't think it's a situation where we can say we only need one or the other or we could get rid of it because I think if my memory, and I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong, of these two rules serves me, they serve two very different purposes. Mandy? So yeah, I, I'm the one that brought this up and then I started thinking and they do kind of serve two different purposes. Mm -hmm. I guess one of my thoughts personally was potentially specifically to the resolutions, proclamations, and commemorations, which I think we added in to consideration of, of 8.6 at one point. Not, I'm not sure it was originally there. I think we added it in. And now as we get to these resolutions that are yearly, I'm wondering if GOL, if you know, we just had the Tibet one that do, did change substantially, but had it not changed, if really the only change was the date of the mm -hmm. ceremony, does it really every year need to come back to GOL? And so that was where I was thinking like, and if it doesn't, then 8.2 says it's technically referred to us and so we have to act on it. 8. Set says we have to act on it. So then we're almost, we've satisfied 8.2, but then it sits in GOL without it coming out or it's just this weird, I, you would have to, vote to waive that rule in order to act on it without GOL acting, but does GOL really need to see it? So that, that was the, so maybe it's more specific to resolutions, proclamations, and commemorations mm -hmm. than the whole rule in the end. Mm -hmm. And you see it, Evan. So if the issue is that admittedly narrow situation, I'm, I'm wondering if instead of trying to dr address it through the town council rules of procedure, mm -hmm. it could be addressed by a GOL policy that just says for annual resolutions where there is no change except for the dates, GOL automatically declare, the, the, there's something that GOL could do, which is to say it gets automatically referred and it could be something where GOL could also delegate the responsibility to the chair to say mm -hmm. for annual resolutions where the only change is the date, it's automatically referred to GOL and the chair can, you know, like I, I think instead of trying to change the rule, which is complicated, it could be solved in here. No. I kind of like Evan's suggestion, you know, because cause that was where I was thinking about it, you know, and and we've had this issue. We potentially had it with Tibet. That one was changed, but sometimes they don't come, but they're, they're yearly, and do we really need to? So maybe just delegating as a GOL council uh, committee that authority to the chair to say, hey, if it is an annual resolution and the chair doesn't see any changes, the chair can push it back as clear, consistent, it, and actionable. Clear, clear, consistent. Okay. Yeah. Thinking about the um, sanctu I mean, Lucio Perez's sanctuary thing, where we did it was rewritten by the s original sponsor, um, the uh, minister, and uh, there were issues that we had to change in that because th his name was listed, et cetera, et cetera. So, but it's probably going to be yearly since there doesn't seem to be a lot of hope. Um, so uh, th I. I hmm. But I think the chair would have caught that. So you could, uh, for, I mean, could simply say, well, there's no change, but dates and what? Minor, um, not do we want to, or do you just want to make it just dates? Because otherwise, any other change technically would send it back, send it to the full GOL. So if, if, if the minister's name changes or, you know, 
some other minor change or if the location changes or whatever, um, it doesn't affect in any way the content uh, or intent of the uh, uh, document. Yeah. It just, uh, so is there some way to word that that we'd be comfortable with, other, or do you want to just leave it as date? I was going to say maybe for annual resolutions or annual resolutions, proclamations, commemorations, and citations, changes that are done due to the annual nature of the document, which could be a minister's name because it's annual and at some point that minister changes names, mm -hmm. you know, um, or the date, or the, date or the location of town hall, you know, the time, you know, but maybe it's okay. changes due to the annual nature might sufficiently okay. cover that. Okay. I will try to word this, and uh, it will be presented as a policy uh, for approval by GOL at its next meeting. Um, okay, good. Um, at GO GOL's next meeting. Um, we had the discussion last time. This is item number six. Continued discussion of rule procedures 8.4. Should it be eliminated or revised? Are there any further thoughts on this? Do you wish to take it up at greater length now? Um, I looked at Councillor Evan, but anyone? I would defer to Evan and Pat since they are, no, Evan, since Evan is the one leaving our committee that is here. Right. And it was partially his request, partially mine too, so. So I think w where we left last time was a fairly divided committee. Yes. Some members feeling like we should eliminate it, some members feeling as though we should keep it, and other members feeling as though we should modify it. I think my stance now is the same place as it was last meeting, which was keep 8.4, but instead of carving out exceptions, specifying for which types of measures it makes sense to maintain that rule, uh, that said, I have not in the interim between the two meetings given any thought yeah. to which things would fall in that list and so I'm, I'm not prepared to offer revised language. Right. Um, I also see Mandy Jo ready to leave. I also wonder if perhaps um, given the division and I'm not using division in a negative term, no, but no, literal no, division on this committee right. over this issue, mm -hmm. if perhaps it makes sense to hold off to the next meeting where there'll be two new members, one of which has a lot of experience running our meetings right. um, and preparing these agendas, um, and one of which has extensive experience uh, in, in governance. Um, Right. Those new ideas might help the discussion because I, I worry if we try and continue now, we just we end up the same stalemate that we've had. Right. Okay. Okay. So your suggestion is hold this off for the next meeting, given the new membership. Any other thoughts on this? All right. Item seven: Rule Procedure Ten Point Eight. Councillors is non-voting liaison. Should we add a bullet? Um, that GOL shall annually, I assume it we meant GOL shall annually review the list of committees which are assigned liaisons. Is that something that people have thoughts on that? I think at the, when I read it first, or when it was presented first, it was the president, um, I believe, or maybe it was just the council should review, council should review it. It seems to me that if there's going to be a review, it should be by GOL. Um, and then it just goes to the council with our suggestions, with our uh, recommendations. Um, I guess there's two questions. One, should there be an annual review? And two, who should do it? And I guess three, uh, should it then go into the rules of procedure? Should we add an item? I think it would be item M, um, I think. Yeah. Thoughts on that? Should there be an annual review? So I agree there should be an annual review. All right, there are two votes for an annual <laughs> review. Anyone else, any thoughts? 
two and a half votes for an annual review. So, okay. Two and three quarters. So, okay. There should be an annual review. So, so item, do it. item K says not all town multiple member bodies will have liaisons. The council shall maintain a priority list of bodies most likely to propose measures to the council. The president shall send a list of all liaisons to all town multiple member bodies after each annual reorganization. Bodies without a current liaison may ask the council to assign one subject to availability. Right. And then L is assign uh, indicate preferences annually. So somewhere in the, maybe it's not an added M, maybe it's part of K, right. the council maintains a priority list of bodies most likely to propose measures to the council, which shall be reviewed annually by GOL. Something like that, just add that phrase right into K. I'm wondering um, who on the council would actually maintain a priority list of bodies. So I assume the president, we're really saying the president's gonna do that? We certainly are not gonna do that as a body. Right. Um, so, or I take it back, yeah, we would be? I mean, isn't the fact that we voted those nine kind of our priority list of bodies? But um, it's, who's gonna change that? And in a year from now, or six, nine months, whenever it is from now, um, I, I find it hard to believe that someone or someone's is gonna go through and come up with a new list of priority committees. We're just gonna start with, I mean, we're looking for someone to kind of do that, right? And come to the council with, okay, here then the bodies, that we have had liaisons on, and uh, we're recommending that X, Y, Z. I think the vice president of the council should do it. Give it to the vice um, president. And you know, in a certain way, I'm not kidding, um, mm -hmm. because it does seem to me that there needs to be some place if, if a liaison is on a committee uh, and realizes that, you know this committee really doesn't need a liaison, or oh my God, I went to a couple of meetings of a committee I'm not a liaison for, and you know, there are thing, times we need to discuss committees. Uh, I think there needs to be somebody to gather that information, and uh, it seems like the vice president could do that because the, uh, I don't know. So you're suggesting perhaps instead of the council shall maintain, you could, well, I don't know. Can it should be the council through the, through the uh, yeah. And, and I'm not teasing, president. I think that. No, 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 I'm, I understand you. So the council through the vice president shall maintain a priority list of bodies most likely to propose measures to the council, um, and this uh, list shall be reviewed annually by GOL. And it could be that a, a, a committee says, oh my God, we don't have a liaison, we really need one. You know. Yeah, no, if we would like to have that, right. Through the VP. Any thoughts on that? Yes, I, I'm fine with it. My only thought is I think somewhere in the other part of the rules we have duties of president and vice president. If we add this specifically in, I would probably recommend right. throwing it into the duties of the vice president section earlier on too. Okay. Okay. We can, I'm sorry, Evan, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so that was a really interesting suggestion, and I wouldn't have thought of delegating it to the vice president, so I'm not sure how I feel about it yet, because mm -hmm. I haven't had time to think about it. Um, I, I w do have some concerns um, about how that might be perceived, delegating it to one person, if there's the idea that the vice president taking any current or potential future vice presidents out of it, if it would just be seen as the vice president's list of favorite committees that they want. Um, mm -hmm. And so, uh, and I speak of this um, uh, not out of any distrust for a committee, and I don't share these like, oh, the president and the vice president have too much power type of things. Um, but I speak of it as someone who was involved uh, in the OCA discussion to come up with the list that we had. Yeah. And I think that was, it wasn't a very long discussion. We actually did it in about 45 minutes, which is short for any committee. Um, but it was really useful because, for instance, I personally, and it's in the minutes in the video, I personally didn't think the Disability Access Advisory Committee should have a liaison. Mm -hmm. I argued against that. Um, the two other people involved in that discussion 
felt it should, and so they argued, so it ended up on the list, and that was actually one of the more popular ones that people wanted to be a liaison to. But if I was the vice president, I would have never recommended that as a committee to have a Disability Act uh, uh, liaison. So I'm wondering if there's a benefit in having a committee have that discussion to have those multiple perspectives. Yeah, I think, yeah, I hear what you're saying about the committee and the committee needing to have the discussion. I think that's accurate. I guess when I was thinking about having the um, vice president hold that list as, as not as that person making the decisions, making the list, yeah. but bringing that list then forward to the council. But it may just be simpler to keep it in GOL. In other words, the list is kept by, the list is kept by the council and it's decided every year, as we just did recently, and that's really the list. It doesn't require anyone to do anything. And at the end of the, uh, near in, in November, December, GOL would be assumed to automatically review that list and um, make any recommendations it saw fit. So maybe we should just have, the council shall maintain a priority list of bodies, most likely to propose measures to the council, which list shall be reviewed annually, annually by GOL. I mean, the, the other option is if we're getting hung up on the word maintain and who maintains that list, um, it could be the council shall annually produce a priority list. So every year the council has to create a list, and of course the council would likely delegate that to a committee, likely GOL, but instead of being like, who's, who's holding that list, it's just, no, every year we propose a list. I, Again, I don't want to take too much time on this, but we could wordsmith it, um, and then we have a, um, a recommendation to change um, item K under 10.8 with the intention of ensuring that it does get reviewed, which seems like a, a good thing to do. GOL would seem to be the natural body to do so. And maybe also a slight wording change, just to clarify that the council, as you said, Evan, creates, how would you, again, the council shall either, how did you put it? Produce, shall produce, okay. Produce a priority list of bodies, so we change maintain to produce and then insert which list shall be reviewed annually by GOL. If my colleagues are satisfied with that, and I'm not saying you are, but if you, if you are, um, we could proceed uh, to a vote. Especially since two of our colleagues aren't here, we can just ram this through. No. <laughs> um, so I'm willing to entertain a motion. The motion would be to the effect uh, uh, that we would amend item K of uh, Rules of Procedure 10.8, Counselors as Non-Voting Liaisons. The second sentence shall now read, the council shall produce a priority list of bodies most likely to propose measures to the council which list shall be reviewed annually by GOL. Any, that's the um, suggestion. Uh, so I want to make a, a change to that language, okay. actually, because okay. I'm remembering a su that I s suggested a change either in OCA or in the council. Go ahead. Um, so the list we ended up with was not a priority list of bodies most likely to propose measures to the council, mm -hmm. and in fact, many of the committees we propose for liaisons don't ever propose measures right, to the council. And so it should actually be a, pri um, a priority list of bodies that should have liaisons or something like that, because it's not, that we didn't actually do this. Okay. Right. Um, what we did was we produced a priority list of bodies that we believe should have council liaisons, and so the language should reflect that. Apologize to the clerk and to the note taker. We're going to try and wordsmith this one last time. And if I were you, I'd wait <laughs> before writing anything until I've said it about three times. Um, the 
the council shall produce a list of bodies which the council believes, and we're, we don't write anything yet, which the council believes. Can, can it just be as simple as the council shall produce a priority list of bodies for council liaisons? I mean, can it? Or which require? Which yeah, that's for, for count. Can, what, Athena, you're better at this than we are. I'm not sure that that's true. <laughs> uh, priority list of bodies to be assigned council liaisons. You are better. Um, to be assigned council liaisons. Which list shall be, this part I have, so I'm, I'm comfortable here. Which list shall be reviewed annually by GOL? So I'm going to ask the clerk, with her indulgence, to read back the proposed motion, if she can. And we will help her if she can. The council shall produce a priority list of bodies to be assigned council liaisons, which list shall be reviewed annually by the GOL. Okay, so that's the change in language. And the motion would be, oh, um, yes, that's all right, that's all right. We're just to, um, the motion would be to amend mm -hmm. item K of rule of procedure 10.8, counselors as non-voting liaisons. So I, I guess we, to amend the second sentence. So I think. Yeah. We want to give this a try, and if go ahead, and if I mess it up, if someone no, else can correct me. You're in good company. Okay, so I move to amend Rule Ten Point Eight K to strike the sentence: "The council shall maintain a priority list of bodies most likely to propose measures to the council," and replace it okay. with: strike "The council the shall produce a priority list of bodies to be assigned." Council liaisons, which list shall be reviewed annually by GOL. Okay. Would you like to have that read back to you? I would. Yeah. And I think the clerk would us as well, the note taker, make sure we're all on the same page. So when you're ready, go ahead. No, um, would you want to repeat? Why don't you have, he can repeat the motion again. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Evan. I move to append. Oof. I move to amend rules of procedure rule 10.8K to strike the sentence the council shall maintain a priority list of bodies most likely to propose measures to the council and replace it with the council shall produce a priority list of bodies to be assigned council liaisons, which list shall be annually reviewed by GOL. So we have a motion before us and it has been seconded enthusiastically by um, Pat. I have nothing further to say. So I'm going to call the question. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your hands and saying aye. 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 There are uh, no, none opposed. Uh, so the vote is three in favor, none opposed, two absent. OK. And hopefully I remind myself when we did that. It's getting too old for this. 10.8. Bear with me for a second. 10.8K amendment to the council. Item eight is about consent agendas. And this is something I believe Mandy brought up last time. Your intrepid chair went out and spent hours of research and found <laughs> an interesting item on consent agendas. But it strikes me with um, only three members present, one of whom is tragically going off to another committee and leaving all his knowledge and expertise, taking it with him. 
Um, this probably should be left for another day, um, unless someone's had a chance to look at it and has some thoughts about it. it, it um, I thought it would be it's an interesting discussion. To, I think the, the issue was raised, to what degree do we need or should we introduce into the rules of procedure um, specific items about consent agendas. We are using them and we're going to continue to use them and maybe that's sufficient. But the suggestion was there might be a place for uh, that in the rules of procedure and that discussion um, perhaps would be more fruitful at our next meeting, perhaps. It does seem worthwhile having it in rules and procedures. Okay, yeah. so you would like to have this discussion? Yeah, we, I don't like have to have it, have it now. Okay. I can be You'd happy like to, to have, have it. Like okay, fine. I, I agree with you that I think given um, the current situation with the change in membership and missing two members, that's something we should leave for next time. We do have to emphasize the need for counselors to read the items in the consent agenda that's so that we true. can utilize it there's only so much the rules of procedure can do. <laughs> Human nature is beyond his powers. Um, item nine, discussion of how we proceed with bylaws for future consideration referred to the committee by the council. All right. Evan has done a wonderful job producing a document for us and um, I have done nothing with it, nor have we as a committee. Evan is leaving us as of today, after today. I'm looking for suggestions, advice. One thought I had a long time ago when we first talked about this was that the chair would certainly need, would, would probably solicit help. In other words, a particular item that would be assigned to members of the committee to prepare um, for the committee. Um, rather than leave it up to the chair alone to present these things, though the chair certainly has a major role to play. So if we look at priority one and we have a host of, of items here, what I'm envisioning, not at this meeting, obviously since only two members are going to continue, um, would be to, I'm just suggesting this for your thoughts and, and input, um, assigning some or all of these to particular members with the thought that they would come back at the next meeting or some future meeting prepared to um, present it uh, to the, the whole body. Is that um, allowable? <laughs> Does that violate some arcane uh, notion of, of, uh, of uh, uh, the uh, uh, open, meeting, open meeting law? Um, yeah, in other words, I would, what I'm thinking is I would say, Evan, you take 2.4, I'll do 3.6, 3.7, you do 3.15, 3.16, and then your job is to go off and just research it and um, see what problems there are and then just present it to your colleagues for the discussion. So in each item, I would then turn to uh, whoever it was and say, okay, take us through this. Evan. So if I could just speak to this document that I created briefly. Yes. Um, so I, I tried my best to group different things into three priority groups, um, which you've read for purpose of public Number one is they're simple, they can be done, in my opinion, very quickly. Right. Two is they're not so simple, but we should probably try to do them. And three is they're not so simple and there's really no rush on them. Okay. The ones in priority number one, I don't even think require the level of effort that you just described. Okay. If you read through the list, half of them are literally just we need to ask town attorney's opinion. Okay. Um, so so the chair could take care of those that. I think the chair could take um, so, because some of them are literally just, we need more guidance from town attorney on this. Okay. Um, others, I think, honestly, you, I think this entire priority one list you could put on one GOL agenda and complete with time to spare. Because some of them, so the zero energy town buildings, it's just there's a definition that needs to be fixed. It's not substantive, but there was some concern because that was such a hotly contested bylaw that bylaw review committee didn't want to touch it. Right, mm -hmm. um, things like um, the personnel bylaw and human rights uh, and human rights and human rights commissions thing. The only thing between that was that our sort of equal opportunity language was different between the two. Yeah. And to me, that's as easy as sending a question to Paul to relay to Evelyn what's the most up to date equal opportunity language that the town uses, and we should just insert that into bylaws. Um, affordable housing trust, that's literally we just have to tell the town manager to file 
with the register of deeds, um, which maybe he's already done. Um, right. 3.31 is we have to send it to CONCOM. So I actually think that ha probably ha more than half of priority one are either just needs to be communicated or asked to the town manager, the town attorney, or sent to someone else. So that doesn't even require people to do anything other than the chair. Mm -hmm. And then others could probably be just quickly fixed on an agenda. So if you're going to d assign out yeah. ones, it would be the priority two ones. Um, because those are the ones that should be done, but are going to take a little bit more time. Great. Um, so yeah, my recommendation to the chair is to go through priority one and just do the ones, um, right. just do the ones that are inquiries to town attorney. And I'd be if, if there's any yeah, confusion about what they are, you, yeah. right? You right. can do that. I'm no right. longer a member of this committee, so there's no quorum right. things or any of that. Um, and then the rest of them could literally just be put on one agenda, and, and I think done pretty quickly. And with priority three, any thoughts on that? How that might be handled? Um, or maybe leave that for the S committee to e decide. Yeah, I think I think get through. My personal opinion on this is get through two. one and two first, okay. and then if this committee all of a sudden finds itself with a little bit of extra capacity or downtime, yeah, and it might, you know, maybe right, over the right. summer or something, right. um, then the ones on three are are worth looking at. The other side of this is that some of these you might want to also refer. All of these are referred to GOL, and in a lot of ways that makes sense, but other of these you sure. might want to actually, in the same way that CRC just jettisoned a bunch of things mm -hmm. to TSO, yeah. thanks, um, you might want to do the same. So regulations relating to animals, I don't actually remember exactly what that was, but it was literally, there were regulate, there's a problem that doesn't currently exist, but could exist in the future. I almost want to say it has to do with like people keeping pet pigs or something like it was something sort of obscure, <laughs> right. but it doesn't necessarily maybe it doesn't make sense with this body to it. The, the God, I'm not articulating well. What needs to be done is actual new regulations be promulgated, right. and it might not make sense for GOL to do that. It might make sense for GOL to look at that and go, huh, how we enforce animal regulations unfortunately, is really a TSO thing. Yeah, right. And so maybe we send that to TSO to work with town staff to come up with new regulations. So I think um, the other thing you're going to find with both, I think, two and three, is there might be occasions where you go, well, GOL shouldn't be doing this anyway. Let's send it. And the GOL's job will be sending it to the relevant committee. Right. OK. Very helpful. Very good, Evan, thank you. Um, public ways requests which require town council approval. Um, just again, there are only three of us, one of us is going to be gone next time. But let me just say a few things briefly, both for myself to try and articulate it. I um, had another discussion with, with the town manager um, the proposal that we've gone through once, uh, largely with Mandy's edits, is a proposal that um, public ways requests all get funneled through the town manager's office, that that's the initial point of contact. That's not the only way things could be done. Um, and so we might want to, at some point, consider alternatives to that. But um, for instance, you could have a dedicated subcommittee who deals with this. Some towns or cities have that. They have a, a parking body that deals with all these kinds of issues. Um, that may be beyond both our capacity and given all the other things we're trying to do, it might be simpler to keep to the system that we have at the moment. Um, the concern that Paul expressed and that I've expressed in some of my written comments to you in the memos I've sent is what happens when someone brings a, a, a public ways request to the town manager, and he sends it on to staff or whatever, and they decide that this is, doesn't merit uh, um, any change or doesn't uh, merit any kind of, uh, of uh, positive response. And what I thought was that that's then there's a role there for the district representatives. But another thought came to me and also to Paul that this could also be a place for TSO not to give them yet more work to do, but we did say that transportation and also parking falls within their uh, ambit, 
So what I'm really, what I'm hoping, we're not going to do this today. It's taken a long, lot longer than I thought it would. Maybe it'll take a lot longer still. But the thought was we would finally produce a document, kind of an FAQ, as we've done for other kinds of things that could be put on the town website so that people who do have questions about this could go there and it would tell them what the procedures are. And what we're trying to do, at least from my understanding as a committee, is come up with some version of that document, um, perhaps to be ultimately vetted by the council, but maybe not, but whatever. A document that basically says, okay, this is the procedures that should be followed. And at the moment, the understanding is that you would, you would begin by going to town hall. And you would say, I've got this, this problem, I've got this issue, and I want the town to do something about it. You could come with uh, you know, a whole bunch of people, you could come with a, you know, or by yourself, however you want to do it. Um, and then it, it goes through the town process. And if it does eventually reach the point where the town says, okay, we're gonna propose a change, and it does involve the council as keepers of the public way, then there are steps that we, we just followed uh, for Lincoln Avenue that would be part of that process. Um, if it's decided by, it, through the town hall process, that this doesn't merit any kind of, of, of change or, uh, or, or, or the, anyway, the, 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 the person who's come is not satisfied because nothing happens or whatever, the question becomes what happens next? And one suggestion, just to be put out here, is that they could go to TSO and make their case to TSO. Um, and TSO would listen, and it, it's then if TSO felt there was some merit, um, they could go back to, to, they could actually go to the council and request a public hearing. Um, anyway, the, the, the thought was the TSO could serve as a kind of uh, release valve or escape valve for those situations, which may be very rare, but those situations where someone has asked for a change to the public way and has felt, rightly or wrongly, that nothing's happened. Um, TSO could serve that function. So part of this process could be, you know, if there is no resolution or if you do not get satisfaction and you still feel that you have a case, um, your recourse is not to get 500, whatever, how many other excuses you need, which seems to me yeah. just silly but that you can go to TSO and ask them, to ask to be put on their agenda, and um, you, know, you can make your case before them. So that's where we stand at the moment. Um, and I could use input either in written form or right now, certainly we have a few minutes. Do you, are you comfortable with the idea of basically everything initially going through town hall, or would you prefer that we begin to think about a way that some other body would take these things on? Um, and secondly, if there is an impasse, if, if the individual making the request feels like nothing has happened or nothing is happening, um, should we provide some kind of, of process other than just, well, go get 1,800, whatever, number of signatures? Any thoughts on that? Um, one of the things that I think is that um, it, both um, town managers should be notified if a resident has a complaint or concern and their district representatives should be notified so that we have some chance to check in with Paul if we need to, or if there is a res the resident contacts us later, we, we've already started to look at it. I do think this belongs in TSO, no, no teasing or anything else. Right. Um, and I, I just, and my concern it o always is while residents bring very important um, perspectives. They're not always right on or the ones that we should follow. Right. And so it, I just feel, I'm concerned literally for the health of TSO. Um, a long term is if they're receiving all residents dissatisfaction. And with that said, there are some serious dissatisfactions that don't get addressed. Right. You know, the difference between Lincoln Avenue, how it's treated, and how um, Stanley Street has been treated around speed. You know, so there really needs, TSO mm -hmm. really needs to create a policy, um, and equity needs to be part of that policy. Right. So I hear two things, Pat, just for my own sake. One is that, if I hear you correctly, when 
when someone does come to Paul and says, I got a problem on X Street or whatever, or I want, you know, parking, whatever. Yeah, the issue. You would ask Paul or expect Paul to just notify as a matter of course the two district representatives in their district mm -hmm. just to let them know that so-and-so came to me and with this complaint and um, – or at least I'm, I'm taking it under advisement. I'm, in other words, you want him to do this initially. In other words, one of the things he normally – when someone comes to him um, and they speak to him or somehow it's communicated to him that he would uh, ask them or find out what district they're in and then notify the district rep right from the start or are you thinking that once a decision has been made, because often there is no decision made, it just is let to die because it's considered to be frivolous or just they just don't know what to do with it. Most residents do contact their district representative or phone call. So I get a lot of that email that says I contacted your, I contacted your district and, and, and nothing's come of it and right. I really didn't know anything about it. So I think initially when Paul gets something or, it, or somehow residents need to be encouraged to contact both simultaneously the town manager and their district rep. I'd be sympathetic with the suggestion that says that, Paul, um, when you do have these conversations, wh whether they're email or whether they're personal, however, when it comes to you at least, um, and maybe even the staff, staff perhaps, it should be a matter of course that you always say, have you contacted your district rep? Yes. And so rather than making it on him, um, we would simply expect him to always mention to people that they should reach out to their rep. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's, that seems to me reasonable, uh, as opposed to saying, Paul, every time somebody calls you on the phone or whatever, and you hear about a complaint, you have to immediately or within the next 24 hours send an email to whoever. So the assumption would be that you would always say, have you spoken to your rep? You should. Okay. That's on my end. Okay. All right. Um, I hear your point about equity between districts. I think that's something that's going to come up before TSO. Um, and certainly Lincoln Avenue would provide a kind of focus for that. I'm not sure at the moment, it's just my ignorance, and I'm speaking this personally, I'm not convinced that there is a problem, but clearly there's a perception that there is, and it seems TSO is a place where that discussion could be at least start. Um, I wasn't comfortable with it at the council meeting because um, I felt that there was a lot of I would be much more comfortable hearing at it at the committee level because I think there's a chance to really dig into the details. At the council level, I felt that grenades were being lobbed um, and uh, yeah. I wasn't happy with that, but I kept my mouth shut. Um, but I hear you with the yeah, idea. Yeah. No, not just you. I, I was being hurled by a couple of people and um, it may, may, maybe they're appropriate, but, it, um, but I hear it. The issue is there. I think it needs to be addressed. TSO is a place to address it. Um, Evan, any thoughts to this conversation before you leave us and sail off into the distance? Well, I'll be sailing off into TSO. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I won't be leaving this conversation. It, th it, this does belong in TSO. And, and part of the reason we created TSO, and I know one of right. your reasons for, for right. supporting TSO was it would be, um, I don't want to use the word dumping ground for well, parking complaints, but about, you know, um, but certainly it's a it's it's a venue yep. um, for people to express their concerns and frustrations about uh, parking in public ways. I, I think the first big challenge for TSO will be to figure out how to do that, and so I I actually wonder at this point, given that this body has sort of struggled with this for so long, if it makes sense to say to TSO, here's what we've come up with, but much of this is now in, in your purview. Okay. How do you want to handle it? Sure. Um, I feel bad for the two members of this committee who have struggled with it on this committee who also serve on TSO. Um, but I, I do think that, that that's going to be actually, I, I think you, you said something earlier, which was, do we send them to TSO? I don't think we need to send them to TSO. I think once people know TSO exists, the people who would come forward are going to go there anyway and give public comment, right? Once, once people see that TSO is involved with this, whether or not there's a formal process that says, oh, you didn't get your way, I should have worded that differently, but sure, you, right. now you go to TSO, right. um, I, I think if people know TSO exists, they're gonna do it anyway, and so I actually kind of think 
the onus now is on TSO to figure out how to handle those to distinguish, I think, between things that maybe need to happen and things that don't to ensure equity. Um, right. and, and honestly, also, I think one of the benefits, district, it's hard as a district counselor to say no to your constituents, right? I mean, right. I think we've all faced this. My, I've had constituents who have come forward with parking issues that I don't think are valid, and it's, and it's, it's difficult to say to your constituent, I don't think this opinion is valid and I'm not going to pursue right, it, to right? Pursue it, yeah. And I think the value of the committee is that because it's five members, granted District 3 is overly represented on TSO, um, but it also includes an at-large counselor and it, it, there, there will always be a mix. And so that, that the conversation that we kept hearing at the council of and we've been hearing is how come they're getting this focus when there's problems in my district too? And I think forcing that conversation at a committee level where you have different representatives forces a more holistic view that can be really useful but I don't think it's on us to decide what that looks like for TSO. I think TSO has to figure it out. I, I do want to say that one of the important things about having the public hearing on Lincoln was we realize we do make or have been as a town making decisions on individual streets, right. and we can't do that. We really have to make we have to look at the impact of a decision on other streets nearby. Uh, the equity issue, uh, you once said something about this isn't competing districts and I got something and you didn't get, and I'm not bringing forward Stanley Street as my district didn't get this. Right. I'm bringing it forward because it happens to be one I know. Right. But the right. issues of equity and in, in terms of how North Amherst has been taken care of by DPW, et cetera, or decisions regarding um, uh, streets and, and byways there yeah. compared to Amity Street area compared to Stan, you know, right. the, the voice keep the voices keep saying we're not doing this fairly. Right. So it really does become um, important to address equity and not slip it under the rug because really everybody is getting what they need because that's not true in this right. town. I hear you. Okay. Okay. Good. One last quick question: Would you, the two of you? Uh, hope one day to see on the town council website a policy statement on public way process. So someone, some citizen would click on the town council website and there would be a link that would spell out the, the, the steps, broadly speaking, that and, and the various uh, uh, ways they could access um, or address issues um, that's what I have been trying to uh, create. I hear that um, it, maybe it makes sense now to, to move that over to TSO. I really don't care who creates it, but I do think we should create it. But I'm wondering if you agree. Do you think that, because um, I'm hearing from Evan, maybe we should kind of leave it, you know, not get too specific. And I'm really thinking I want it to be very specific. So someone could read that and see, you know, whether they know this or not, they would go there and it would say, if you don't get satisfaction, or how, phrase it however you like, um, in, a, in a nice politic way, um, you do have the option of X, Y, and Z. One of those options would be to get, however, I can never remember the numbers, signatures, and we assume very few people would pursue that option, but we'd list it. But one of them would be you could um, bring your, your uh, concern to the town services and outreach committee. I'm just asking, and you may not want to say, or you may want to think of some, some more, would that be, for me, that would be a happy day. Um, and I know the town clerk would, would, would be happy too, because she loves to put these policies up and so on. But working with her, we would create this link where you would get this all in black and white. Any thoughts on that at all, or no? Because that's what I've been trying to do, and I will continue to try to do with this committee and or TSO, but I'm gonna stop doing it if I get a sense that people would prefer that really it's not appropriate or bring someone in. I, I think the more information that can be on a town website about what policies or procedures mm -hmm. um, residents need to use would be very you helpful. Gain what they, what they yeah. Want. yeah, yeah. Or attempt, I'm gonna go with that word, right. attempt no. to get what right. they want because I don't right. think every 
I'm, I'm never going to be reelected, so uh, every citizen's petition is not one that needs no, to be responded right. to positively. To it do. needs to be responded to positively, right. but yeah. not necessarily decided in their favor. So no one can come to us and say, we, we don't know what the process is, because there's a process. And you know, if there's a problem with it, we can fix it. But uh, right now, people can legitimately say, as you've said, Pat, uh, you know, I've been asking, 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 nothing happens. Right. It's like, you know, apparently the only way to get anything done is if you have to know people. And uh, clearly we're trying to get away from that. It's right to get away from that. And part of that would be having a process that we can say, here it is, and tell us at what stage this broke down. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's no public present, um, and so there is no public comment. I'd like to adopt the minutes of February 26th. Again, with gratitude to the town clerk for doing this. Um, but any changes, comments, edits, um, I will adopt them by consensus unless there are any changes that people would like to make. The minutes are in your packet, and I can give you a minute to look at it if you need it, because we're doing so. We're not going to beat Mandy's record, I'm afraid, but it looks like we might have a chance of at least being fairly close to it. Any thoughts about the minutes? Okay, I say we're going to accept the minutes by consensus. Future agenda items. I, a couple of things came up at council meeting where I need your help or advice, and I may have to reach out to some other people. But Darcy mentioned a single-use container bylaw. I know you're looking. This is the chair in his. <laughs> where, where is it? And how can I? How can I help her? Uh, anybody here? So, so if you remember. Yes, I think I remember. Bylaw review recommended changes to three bylaws, the single use plastic bag, right. the condo conversion, yeah. and the noise bylaw. And the noise bylaw. There were objections to some of the changes that the bylaw review committee recommended. And so three counselors, Mandy Joe, Darcy, and Kathy, right. Mandy with the, uh, came forth right. with the changes noise. that they want made. We decided to adopt the bylaw review changes clean with the expectation that though their changes would be referred here. Right. Here's what I, I am unclear about right. um, personally, is they were, I, I don't know, if they were referred to GOL, they should have been referred for clarity, consistency, and actionability. And to some extent that makes sense for Kathy's because she kind of wrote a replacement condo conversion bylaw. So actually that should probably go to town attorney and then come back to us. Mm -hmm. Darcy, I think, was just trying to add, Darcy and Mandy Joe were just trying to add stuff back in, although Darcy did change, I think, some of the statistics that were out of date. Um, so. To me, you can't treat them separately because Kathy kind of rewrote a new bylaw, mm -hmm. and you, we should be treating it almost as if it's a new bylaw being introduced. Whereas Mandy, Joe, and Darcy just want to put back in stuff that was taken out, mm -hmm. and so um, Mandy Joe's is the simplest. Yeah. But I don't know what this committee can offer because you, we can't make a. She wants to actually. She wants to delete something that was added. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a motion to de to amend to delete something right. that was added. We can't make a recommendation on clarity, consistency, and actionability on deleting something right. that was w that was added, right? So it's a substantive discussion, so it doesn't really belong here necessarily. The condo conversion thing, I'm not sure it does either until after it's gone through attorney, mm -hmm. attorney review mm -hmm. um, and perhaps goes to um, perhaps CRC um, because it ha it's a housing issue really about right. how, we, how we deal with condos. But I'm not even, it's, this is the thing, I'm not uh, even it, sure. It, yeah, it, it doesn't seem like the condo conversion thing should have to go to CRC. I, I mean, uh, I, I, you know I get frustrated with how many committees, you know. Right. But because it already has been a bylaw, yes, it's being rewritten, and if the, we look, the lawyer looks at it, then GOL is, is responsible to decide whether we're going to go with the lawyer's language. It, does that make it actionable, clear, consistent, and actionable? And then it gets returned to the council to vote on whether they want it in, included in the bylaws, I think. And then just to speak briefly on the single use one, it, so it's the opposite of Mandy Joe's, where Darcy wants to add back in stuff that had been recommended for deletion. I don't know what this committee could do with that, because essentially we'd be discussing whether it's 
the the addition re the readdition makes the bylaw more clear and consistent. But actually, GOL, I mean not GOL, bylaw review took it out for clarity and consistency. So I guess in theory we could make a recommendation. We being you all now right. could make a recommendation about whether you think it should be added back in. Right, and so it's it's the, these three things are, are sort of in this weird gray area. Right. Okay. All right. This is helpful. Um, yeah. Athena. Athena, please. If if I remember right, the plastic bag was changed. It wasn't adding back in the exact language that was removed. It was different language. I'd have to look back through the meeting packet, but I know she submitted something prior to that meeting that was different language than was in the existing bylaw. So. Was it? I can dig it out. See, one of the problems that I'm having as a chair, and this is something hopefully I will solve before I get thrown off, um, is just where these things are. I don't know where they are now. Um, and so I can't even, I mean, I will turn to Athena and she will probably be able to help me. Right away. <laughs> I've got three of them I can't find. And I need to figure out a way that I can hold, fig, fig, hold on to them. But that's my problem. So that's a problem I can solve with, the, with talking to the, to, to the town clerk or to the, to, to the uh, council clerk. But, um, okay, good. This is very helpful. Um, and I will reach out to Athena and I will track these things down and then I will make a decision as to how we should proceed um, based on your helpful suggestion. Um, and I can reach out to the sponsors as well. And as I've promised to do to at least Dorothy and to Kathy, and I certainly can do that to Mandy as well. Um, we had a discussion last time. This is, um, well, I think I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, so that's items I have not anticipated. We've gone through the agenda. Anything anyone needs to, okay. Uh, um, again, my thanks uh, to Evan greatly for his service on this committee. He has been invaluable and he'll probably still be consulted on a regular basis. <laughs> Much to his chagrin. And of course, he's still going to see me at least on TSO. So he can't escape us completely. Um, I'm ready to adjourn this meeting at, believe it or not, 12.15. All right. Thank you all. Thank you to our new note taker and to, as always, our council clerk. Uh, 